Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hi, <laughs> I forgot to turn on my microphone and all that. Sorry for the delay. I would have been ready for like 20 minutes and of course I probably wasn't really ready. So happy Wednesday. Is everything sound and look okay? Cause I didn't do a mic check. Hi Fiona. Hey Margaret. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? Let's see, I moved my camera to the left. The selvage on this fabric has been kind of a nightmare, so I starched it yesterday and then I put a weight on it overnight and it worked. <laughs> it's totally flat, but it won't stay like that, so good thing we're cutting it off today. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Terry. Terry, nice job on that vest. It turned out awesome. It looked beautiful. Sorry it doesn't fit, <laughs> but uh, I think we can all relate to this. If a sewer says they can't relate to that, they're lying to you. <laughs> so just so you know, you're not alone. Um, all right, so today, um, and then also, yeah, do let me know if everything sounds and looks okay. I'm going to be cutting this dark fabric out, but the paper will be on, so I may have to adjust the lighting. Um, I'm making the Zen pants by five out of four patterns, and I know you probably see me doing a five out of four patterns a pattern regularly and it's because they I'm an ambassador and they give one to me for free to sew cut and sew and I just have to post about it <clears throat> I have to do it every month though and so that's why you're gonna see at least one every month from me so <laughs> yeah we do all do Terry I know I know I mean honestly I do silly things all the time so thanks Fiona thanks for telling me Okay, perfect. I'm glad to hear it. You never know, like I haven't streamed since last Thursday and my computer says I need a whole update, like a bigger one, and that can really change things in sound and video. It's always that it affects the permissions. So we always have to navigate those. So, okay, so in full transparency, when I was looking for patterns to make on the five out of four website, this did catch my eye because it looked kind of like jeans. 
and I like sewing jeans and I also kind of figured the reason why, one of the reasons I signed up to do this was I figured oh hey you know like this is great I can sew a pattern um, and it might help others and it might help their customers so I try and pick things I think maybe this one would be not picked as often by customers because it's jeans sewing and there may be fewer people that want to sew that it's not a pair of jeans so I knew that when I went into it but I like the way it looked like jeans even though they're stretchy pants what I didn't realize was that it's meant for knits and I, I don't know why but there's something about the, the description it doesn't mention knits at all it just says stretch pants and I was like I love stretch wovens so that's what I bought I bought a stretch woven um, and I think also sometimes all the images of a website under a pattern don't show for me because they're probably too big or something and it takes a bit at home. So uh, my internet at home is really bad <laughs> and I do a lot of research on patterns and fabric at home. Like I spent hours yesterday, I spent three hours solid buying and searching for fabric for one project. And um, I was getting so irritated and I still wasn't done. I didn't buy it till the end of the day because then I came here, I printed out the 43 pages of patterns, taped them all together and then double checked the yardage because I couldn't find a fabric I was really that into and I wanted to get by with using less because there was only a 1.25 left of this one fabric. And I was like, well, it calls for 1.6. Maybe I can make it work. I couldn't make it work. So. Um, I spend a lot of time at home doing these things and sometimes my internet kind of gets in the way and I think that's why I miss the fact that this is supposed to be cut and sewn in knits. But hey, it's an experiment. So maybe there's someone out there that's like, I don't really want sweatpants with cargo pockets on it. Um, I like the idea of pull on jeans. So we're gonna try it like that and then we'll know. So I like a, an experiment. So, yep, there's always more fabric. <laughs> Hi, Isha, how's it going? So I have picked this stretch woven, this olive green. It's very, very stretchy. Um, a lot of their patterns call for 50% stretch. I never see fabric with 50% stretch. I think it's pretty rare. Um, I don't think it's not out there. I think it's out there. So I think that's another thing to think about sometimes. Um, I decided last second to make this for my daughter. She's at the very bottom of their size range. Oh, in fact, need to look at her measurements um because she needs pants and I thought this is definitely her color and if they don't work out you know I'll try and fix them so so let's see so what do I want to tell you about this this comes in a few rise options it has uh, pockets on the front and a little cargo pocket on the side and back pockets if you want it also comes obviously as a maternity option so if you're someone who knows someone or you're looking for some clothes to make maternity wise there is a maternity option and the, this company actually does a lot for folks who are pregnant or nursing there's a lot of patterns for that so it's, it's interesting to know um, their patterns are also very very inclusive in sizes so let's see where's the size chart I don't print out everything there is a ton of information in these patterns um, I think that's awesome, but I think it's kind of a lot of information. It was, I, I read through all these yesterday and I was a little overwhelmed, so. <clears throat> all right, there it is. It says clearly, knit pants fabric requirements. I did not see this until after downloading it now. <laughs> so it says it requires heavy weight, and a heavy is um, in bold, four-way knit fabric with at least 50% horizontal and 10% vertical stretch. I am not achieving that with this fabric. So we'll see. Let's see. All right, and so where's the size chart though? We wanna know sizing. Oh, here's some of the other options and sketches. So you can see, you don't have to do all these. Good morning, Kelly, how's it going? Yeah, right, Aisha? Hey, Sydney, how's it going? Yeah, 50% stretch is, let's be honest, Anything will fit anybody if the fabric has 50% stretch. <laughs> so <laughs> that's huge. Here's a size chart. I'm looking at, this is, this is so bad, you guys. Like now after 
I'm really gearing up to do these pattern reviews and now I'm looking at every pattern. I'm like, hmm, it's, it's not, it's not really a good thing. It's a good thing, but it's not a good thing. Yeah. Nello, Nancy, how's it going? All right. So the size chart, this goes from a 28 inch waist to a 54 inch waist, 36 inch hips to 61 inch hips, max thigh, 20 inches to 36 inches. Um, there's a bust measurement here. I don't feel like that's relevant. Um, anytime you see r ranges for the measurements, I'm giving you the top one because the pattern will have to fit this person. So it says it can go down lower. Just so you know. It's been a rough morning, Cindy. Oh, I'm sorry. A stretch gauge ruler. <laughs> How does that work? I've never even heard of those. I just do this. So when I do um, a stretch test, I keep it pretty simple. Let me find something, a ruler you can see on camera. So if you're trying to figure out stretch, let's turn this so that we're looking at the, the cross grain of the fabric is um, almost always where the most stretch will be, but it is not guaranteed. And it's really good to pay attention to that because there are some sneaky, lots of sneaky fabrics out there. So what I usually do is I will take a piece of fabric and I will hold it 10 inches apart, right? Like this. And then I'm going to anchor it down here and I'm going to stretch this. And you're not going to stretch it as if your life depends on it. You're going to stretch it, you know, pretty moderately, right? And so I went up to the um, 13 inch mark. So that means it has 30 per, easily 30% stretch. The reason I do 10 inches, they always show like a four inch thing. That's a lot harder to calculate. Um, I just do it like this because, oh, okay, 10 inches. Now it's 13 inches. That's three inches over. Add a zero to that. That's 30%. Very easy. <laughs> so Walter, hello. Oh no, Sydney, really? Aw. That's no good. Can't get cozy without the heater. All right. I'm gonna use, remember um, my um, stream this summer where I upcycled or refurbished? I don't know what I called that stream. I did like a week of it where I sat there and I just like, what's the word for that? Oh my gosh, my brain keeps doing this. Um, well, anyway, I went through my closet, pulled out a lot of things I wasn't wearing, and I either fixed the problem with them, um, parted them out into fabric again. I only had like four things I had to donate, which is great. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. And this is one of the things I parted out. So I turned it back into fabric. So I cut off the elastic and everything. This is great because I know it's been washed. I'm going to use this as the pocket lining. So that's why it's a shirt. <laughs> This doesn't fit me anymore and it's just been used so much I'm not going to donate it so I'm going to use it for fabric in my pockets today and it's cute it's really cute I love it it's got a little olive green center in the flower I wasn't going to line the pockets but I think I'm going to line the pockets I'm going to do a little different um, and then I'm going to use one of my bindings as the pocket facing so that's my plan that's my plan and remember when I had those uh those draw cords where I could remove the outer sheath. I'm going to use this as the draw cord for these pants because it's like a flat tape, but it is knitted in a tube. So I bought the draw cord on Waywack and I didn't know it had this. And so it was kind of much bulkier than what I planned. And it was for those um, zip hoodies I made from five out of four for my niece and nephew. And I, when I realized I could just pull this, this like cotton sheath off, which made it nice and smooth, but it made it also a smaller diameter when I pulled it off and it's kids, you know, jackets need to be smaller. It was left. I was left with this and I've seen this used as draw cord before. So I'm like, perfect. This is great. It's long enough for my daughter too. All right. This is my plan. So one of the things that features really, really prominently in this pattern is their use of something called wonder tape. <laughs> like it's, 
Okay, maybe it's something they sell because it's there's a lot of it being used throughout the pattern and I'm not sure I know what that is now. Like, is it just like a, a dissolvable tape? What is Wonder Tape? I'm kind of busy lately. I should Google it, but I just haven't had time. All right. So because this is a stretch pattern, you definitely want to put the, your pattern pieces with the greatest amount of stretch going across the pieces. And there's a little stretch thing here and it has the arrows like that. All right, so there should still be a grain line because you then it's easier for you to keep it parallel to the selvage. Um, I'm just gonna use this tape together line. Just because it doesn't have a grain line does not mean you shouldn't put it parallel to the selvage. Okay, I'm just gonna say that. I think that that's a lot of companies leave it off and I think it's because they really want you to notice that there's a stretch direction on your pattern pieces, but um, there's lots of ways to achieve it, like, you know, like making it much bigger or something. I've only printed out one size, two sizes. So there, there's, you know, very much that this could be small because there's accommodated for all the lines, although this is the small size, so I'm not sure. Wonder tape, it's amazing. Basically double-sided tape that is narrow, useful, so it is dissolvable. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. I guess I'm kind of old school that way. The ru 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 ruler works exactly the way you are doing it. It ha just has marks where you hold the fabric and present. Oh, that's cool, Nancy. That's very cool. You're just putting your camping. <laughs> yeah, you sound like a parent trying to sell a bad situation to your kids into a good situation. <laughs> I'm on to you. <laughs> I know, I know. All right. So let me look at my sizes though, actually. My daughter, I don't know how she moved out without owning a tape measure. <laughs> like I can't imagine not having a tape measure. <laughs> so let's look at her measurements. Okay, she is 26. 33, oops, no, yeah, 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 33, 26 inseam, total rise, 20. Let me double check that with her messages. All right, let's see. Okay, 26-ish. 33 hip, 26 inches for inseam, yep, and 20 inch total rise. All right, cool. There's nothing like sewing for someone who's nowhere near you. All right, so she's a 26, so she actually is in the bottom range of this XX small. And her hips are 33, so this is great. I'm just gonna make the double X S. <clears throat> that makes it pretty easy. And then let's look at the inseam here. It's a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You know, I'm starting to wonder if this is my printer doing this jagged line thing. 18, what did I say, 26, 18, 28. There's no way that that was correct. I don't think she got that one correct. I may have to hem those when she's here. <laughs> she's taller than me, so I don't think that was quite right. All right, and then let's look at the total rise. Oh, the kids are at school. <laughs> You see this? I'm seeing this a lot lately. You see these jagged lines? Right there. Look at that one. This one's curved, this one isn't. 26 is very short. Yeah, I don't think she knew what she was measuring there, Fiona. When she said that, she goes, does that sound right? I was like, it really doesn't. But I don't know what she was measuring you know, I told her to measure pants. No, I don't think so, Fiona. Maybe she does. 
Maybe she does. She might have been measuring cropped pants because I feel like she has one pair of pants right now she wears and that's it. She has no time to shop right now for, um, and you know, she's she's uh, 18 and, and kind of broke. <laughs> so, but you know, she works somewhere where she could get, she could probably try on clothes and stuff. All right, let's look at this total rise. All right, so I have this front waistband and I have a back yoke. So one of the interesting things about this pattern is that these seams don't match up to each other. I'm not sure, um, like we're, we're gonna explore this. So, but it's something to note. All right, and if this is the, Is this the um, center front? Hmm. Why does this pattern piece look like this? Look at that. Low, low, mid, high, mid. I mean, I know that's for the rise, but I don't see any other lines. Oh, I see low for that mid. Oh, I know why. Okay. That's because if you're doing a really low rise, this line right here gets longer. So the low is over here. Okay. So we're going to do, I think I'm going to do a high rise for her. I feel like that's what she would want. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna fold this. I'm gonna try and get this on the fold. It doesn't look quite right. Like I feel like, I, am I taping together? It's a little bit off. Or maybe the center, it's over here somewhere. I think that's what it is. Let's see here. All right. I wish there was a center notch on this. I'm not quite sure where to put this. I wanna check out the rise. So we'll just um, eyeball it. Okay, so you need to include, if, you're, if you want your total rise and you wanna know where it's gonna be, you need to include the waistband too, no matter what you're doing. So let's figure it out here. 3 8 inch seam allowance. It's about 9 and 5 8 And on the back, put that fold line on the seam line. Oops. This keeps moving. We're just eyeballing it, but still, we want something. I'm kind of curious. All right, so 14 and an eighth plus 19 and five eighths. That's a little bit bigger than what she sent me. So that's 23 and three quarters. So it's about three inches total. So it's about an inch and a half. <clears throat> higher front and back. That's okay. Uh, the waistband does, what do you mean cover? It, the waistband is just on the front and it gets sewn up to the side seam here. So it just goes across the front. And then the yoke back here, um, same thing, it stops, it just goes between the center back and the side seam. And I think you even have to ease it on a little bit. Um, and then you sew your side seams and it says very clearly in the instructions they won't match up. What I didn't understand was that you sew this like a waist, you sew this whole thing. You sew these, <clears throat> you sew this one to the front and this one to the back. And then on your inner one, you make like a continuous piece and you sew it like a waistband. So I, that little jiggity jog is making me a little nervous. So yeah. You recently printed out a pattern where one column did not match with the rest for another pattern after it did not happen. <sighs> yeah, right, Cheryl? <laughs> Bonjour, Davina. Okay, that's what you meant. Yeah, okay. Hey, Delwin, how's it going? 
Um, so you know, Cheryl, do you by any chance have a um, HP printer? Because I recently stumbled upon this comment in a um, some sort of, I don't know what it was, and they were talking about printing. Because I have this problem, you can see it, it kind of gradually gets off, and then it'll get back on track. And it sounds like that's an HP thing. So it's kind of annoying too. I'm not a big fan of the no trim pattern pieces. Yep, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I feel like it's that. And I have no solution for it. It's very annoying for me too. That's why I was wondering if these little jaggedy lines was my printer. I, did, I just keep forgetting to check if that's how they look on the page. I'm doing so much at once sometimes, so. All right, we're just gonna go with this as prescribed, like as the pattern comes. And I'm going to make sure, the reason you need to really stay on like your grain, you need a grain line. You need to do that so that you don't get any torquing going around your leg. It's kind of the absolute worst when your pants the seam on your inseam or your outseam, they kind of rotate around the lower part of your leg. Uh, raise your hand if that's ever happened to you. <laughs> it happened, it has happened to me on one pair of my jeans and only on one leg. So it was pretty random and specific and annoying. These are pretty bell bottomy too. I may hold off on top stitching one of the legs just so I have options when she's in town. Yeah, and it was not, it was not a no trim. Yeah, yeah, I've had that happen on the other ones too. I think that's why I like the, the trim ones though because I do feel like I can really tell that it's the printing. When it's these, I feel like I might get like a smidge off putting the piece of paper up to that line, you know? And then it could be my error, but when it's those, when it's those trim ones, I just, I, the, my style is I cut off all the corners and then I inter, match the intersection. Okay, Terry, thanks. <laughs> what are you cooking today? It's weird, yeah, that's so funny that we have the same pair of pants doing that. <laughs> it feels so funky, it's so distracting. I get used to it all day long, and then when I take them off at the end of the day, I'm like, ooh, that's kind of a relief. <laughs> all right, so I'm just getting these on. We're gonna do a part one and a part two sewing, which is kind of nice. We haven't done that in a, like we haven't gotten to do that as much lately. All right, this is not on the fold and you do need two of them. This is the little, the front waist. So I'm gonna put that way down there. I'm just looking for something I can put here. I can probably put two yolks here. One, two. I need one fly. The other thing I was having trouble understanding was the cargo pockets, so that'll be fun. I love it when something is sort of stymieing me. I'm like, yeah, challenge. <laughs> All right, this, maybe is this a better use of this space here? Yeah, we'll do those because they're on the fold. All right, got all these ready. We'll do all the rest of those towards the bottom. Well, it's cut. How's it look? Is it too bright or anything? Cut this one down lower here. I don't like pattern pieces there on the fold. We're doing the dotted line, so I have to cut the paper off. It's really hard for my daughter to find clothes that fit her. She's pretty small and it's a, it's a real source of frustration for her. I don't think I've made her pants since she was a toddler though. 
So I'm kind of hoping this is my gateway into getting to make her more clothes. She's a little more accepting now of things um, not being a certain like style all the time. Like she knows she needs like work clothes and whatever. So I think that'll be great. Let's see, I'm gonna notch the center of this yoke piece on the bottom and on the top at the fold. It'll be helpful. Just remember if you do this, you only have a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You're gonna want that center mark. It'll be really helpful. Make sure you get it right on the fold. Okay, and then I don't see any other markings. I'm gonna start an envelope. Oh, what is she making, what is she making? Baked chicken, rice, steamed veggies, and buttermilk. Oh my God. I miss first meeting me. What kind of fabric is it? Hi, Diane, hello, welcome, welcome. I am making, um, I am using a stretch woven. So this pattern doesn't call for a stretch woven and that was my fault, but I'm also up for figuring out, hey, will this pattern work for a stretch woven? I am a big fan of them. Knits just don't last as long, you know? So I really like it when I don't have to use a knit. Can I squeeze something else in this bit over here? Maybe this pocket? Yeah. I only need one of these. So then I can cut the fl two flaps maybe right there. All right. <clears throat> it, oh yeah, no problem, Davina. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Everything's too big when you think that's up, yeah. Oh, what happened, Nancy? I was going to cook today, but got my booster shot. Oh, you feel tired. Yeah, I've heard that's happening. Yep. All right. This pattern piece is a little far away from me, but I'm gonna cut this piece of fabric off right here. So I make sure I don't cut it off. So the hem mark right here says that this is designed for a 31 inch inseam. We'll save this. We will cut this piece here. You can't see all of it, can you? Can you even see that one? I have a lot of stuff on the screen, don't I? I didn't know what size to print. Uh, so I was waiting for uh, Cricket to tell me what size she was. So I was like, all right, I know she's down there at the bottom. So I just printed both. That's why I have to cut off one size here. The selvage was really, really roughly. I, this is the one I starched. I never do that kind of thing either. Like I'm usually pretty cavalier. You guys know that. But I starched it and ironed it and then I put a weight on it overnight so that it wouldn't be something I was fighting during the stream, you know, so. Oh, good. Name of my cutting board, this one right here, this one, the cutting mat. Um, this is a, uh, pretty sure a rhino mat. So I needed a, usually I buy these as four by eight sheets because my tables that I used to use are four by eight. Cause I just do the cheapest way to do a, a table, a table. And, um, that I just use shelving under as legs. So then there's storage and I get a four by eight sheet of plywood or melamine or sub subfloor, whatever is at the hardware store that's affordable. And then I put one of these four by eight sheets of plastic on top. In fact, I used to buy them from a place called Humboldt Plastics. Like I would just go there and buy it. It wasn't designed for sewists. It looked just like this. But when I started the stream, I needed a table that fit with my whole setup. And so I needed, I had heard that they had come a long way and there was custom sizes. 
And so I had this one custom cut for that. And it was, and I just looked it up and I don't think they made the Rhino mat, but if you look up custom mats and things like that, it's pretty affordable too for the fact that you're getting it perfectly the size because too big is too big, you know? All right, so there's no notches here except that there is the pocket placement. So let's just mark that. I'm gonna get my, my new white choco liner. I've been really pushing the envelope with this thing because historically I've only been using yellow, which shows, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. I think the soapstone marker would be great on this color, but it, it you have to press hard enough that it's too stretchy, you know? Let's just fold the pocket down like that. I don't even think I'll be able to try these on to see what I think of them for me. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little small. Alright. I don't really need these pattern pieces, so that's why I'm just marking it and then putting the pattern pieces away <clears throat> as I go. Oh yeah, so how did you like them in the Ponte? Because that is one of the recommended fabrics in the list. To mark on black. So, okay, so I am not the spokesperson for marking things, but I will say, Cheryl, that um, I'm a huge fan of Choco liners. And then Nancy turned me on to using the ultra washable Crayola markers. Uh, do I have one here? I usually have one over here, but they kind of move around and you can get so many colors. It doesn't solve the black issue though, but that's the, that those things work great because they're really sharp point. I get the fine point and they're skinny and you can get like 10 colors, which is nice, right? Um, I've used Choco liners for years. They looked, used to look like they were in like a lipstick container, but they have this little wheel like that. It's very precise. Like you can draw really precise lines and it just rolls. I don't know if you can hear it. I love it. But I used to always use a different color. I feel like I used to always use white and something else. And then they were out of white and I switched to yellow. And I kept noticing that the yellow wouldn't go away. And I've heard that from other people. So recently I finally was like, you know what, forget this. I love this thing. I want to keep using it. But you can see yellow on all my buttonholes of a white shirt I've had, and I've had that shirt for two years. So it's there. So I decided recently to get white, and I immediately did a test in the sink here, and it did go away. So the white is really great. And then the other thing I really like, and I got it at Waywac, which is like an online sewing supply place, and it's spelled W-A-W-A-K. That's their name. Um, the other thing I really love is the soapstone pencil, and it's literally soapstone and sharpened in a clear pencil case. And I love, love, love that thing too. So those are my two methods. And then the Crayola is so great because um, it's so easy. It just flows, you know, and it's really nice. So yeah, no yellow. Hey, she, uh, wait, uh, Asian Afros, how's it going? Woo woo, you made it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right, Nancy? That would be so nice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the yellow, um, you know, use carefully. It's, it's such a great yellow. Like it works really great. But at the same time, like I said, I've had trouble getting it to go away. All right. So it's, um,
This is great. My daughter's coming to visit next week. Sorry, I'm a little off camera here. I'll slide this down once I get it cut. So then I can force her to take a picture. She's my other little patootie. Patootie Junior. She would really hate me calling her that. So maybe one of you will, and then I won't get blamed for it. <laughs> All right, so let's slide this down. I have a lot of weights on this. All right, so this is where all these rise lines are. And um, I'm going to admit, like, I'm a little confused by all the rise lines because I feel like it says it's different rises for anybody. And you have a rise changes if you're doing a maternity version. <clears throat> I am a little confused because... This only looks like it's for maternity because then that means if you were to use this on a normal, a normal, a normal human being that's not, doesn't have a, you know, a live growing organism inside, um, the rise would only be down in the front, which usually when it's a different rise, it goes all the way around. Like it doesn't just affect the front under the belly. So. I know, Asian. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. <laughs> it happens, you know? All right, I don't need this pattern piece. It's totally fine. Don't always have to come. <laughs> Nancy, <laughs> right? Yes, Cheryl, it's by Clover. I would love to be a spokesperson for them. I use so many of their products and I've always just naturally used them, but you know, probably never gonna happen. Okay, we just have our little pieces left. I can turn this actually. I have this really long piece. Don't you love how I'm like, maybe this will be useful. I think it would be useful for this one. <laughs> You're like, you comment on what a cutie patootie she is. <laughs> a stitch in time. Wait, that sounds familiar. My tiny irons. Do you think these are tiny? They're like, this is my weight routine. Urgh. You know. <laughs> stitch in time. That sounds so familiar. What is that? All right. This is a fake fly and uh, it is definitely a fake fly. Like literally it's just a facing that you stitch down on the pants, the center front of the pants. You don't even have to do the stitching along the front. I just did that upside down. Um, you don't even have to do the stitching along the front to where it looks like it, it is a fly where it opens a little bit but it's stitched shut. It's e even more fake than that. Like it's really easy to sew this, okay? And it will give it that kind of jeans look that fooled me into thinking that you use stretch woven for this. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm gonna do a combination of the cover stitch for the top, the double needle top stitching for this. I'm gonna pin this on here so I don't lose it in my bin because it's twiny. I don't think I can use any of this. My bin is getting full. All right, so none of these can go along the strip here. I'm gonna cut that puppy off, throw it in the bin. And then we have this right here. And I was thinking that I could get this out of here. I could get one yoke, but this is already doubled fabric, so don't do that, because then I'll have a weird piece over there. All right, so we'll just do this for the pocket and the flaps. So yeah, this, this pocket's really interesting. I wish I could see a sewn version of it up close. That's all I would really need, because the instructions are a little, they're pretty involved even though I don't think it's hard to sew at all. They're just very detailed, which is great. 
I just need to pay attention and read it. But yeah, so I think what you do I'll show you in a second, actually, once I have the flats cut. Not, not tiny, not light. Wait, I thought you said tiny. Oh. Oh, cool, Sydney. Yeah, uh... Nancy, is it um, ultra clean? Let me get one for you. Ultra washable or ultra clean? They're all here on my little cart. So many colors. I have a couple of them at home because I use them at home too. And then I'll bring the soapstone for you. Ultra clean washable. Yes. They look like this. I say get these skinny ones, right? And then I, this is my soapstone pencil. So you see right here, this is soapstone. My countertops at home are soapstone. So this, the reason I didn't use this, but look, it actually draws pretty good. I, I was thinking that it would be hard on the stretch and it would have been to go crosswise, but lengthwise it's fine. And then it, it's gonna stay on there better than the chalk because I don't know why, but the chalk just is more dusty and sits on top and you might lose it. Whereas this, you won't, but it does wash out. And then, you know, you unscrew it and it, the, this is filled with the soapstone and then you have to sharpen your top. So I've actually been trying to pay attention. I, I really take care of this and I make sure I'm always not bashing it around because it could break inside there. So. Yeah, you use soap. That's so smart, Davina. So smart. Yeah. Yeah, and then one of my other favorite things is this ancient um, wax crayon for Taylor's marking. I love this thing. <laughs> it's literally probably 30 years old. I got it from someone's um, sewing stash. From a, from a relative who'd passed away. <laughs> there were like garters and all kinds of, you know, sewing things from a bygone era. But that one, I, it's lost its sharp edge and I would have to, and sometimes I do, I sharpen it and then I lose a little bit of it. So, you know, I don't want to lose any more. I love the thing. You can find those too. I just don't need one more thing. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you sew this flap, right? And then you attach it to this. Wait, I just don't understand why this, how this does this. I've sewn pockets where it had this turned down, but it wasn't in the back side of the fabric. Oh, interesting, Kelly. Do you think it's kind of the same thing? Maybe it's even more affordable in the welding market, you know? Yeah, and they are ultra clean washable. That's what it says, ultra clean washable. All right, so. There's only this, see this dotted line down the center? The reason that you do that is because uh, one of the nifty things about this pattern is there's a little ribbon trim or twill tape and a snap. Yeah, I just don't understand what this is for. Unless you stitch it down like this and then this flap goes like this. It's all Maybe you do this. Maybe you. Maybe it's a facing behind it. Maybe that's probably what it is. That's got to be what it is. Okay, I have to talk through things sometimes. All 
right. Got our pocket. We need the back pockets and the front pockets. Lots of pockets. Lots of pockets. Hola, Beverly. Como esta usted? Ah, oh, you're in Puerto Vallarta. Nice. <laughs> I would love some, Beverly. Thanks. <laughs> Lots of time on your hands, I guess. I think you offered recently <clears throat> on some pattern or you said, hey, figure out what you want. And I meant to. I always just look at the top 10 videos and then I go with those, you know. And I think you guys have done, I think the top five videos on my channel are my how-tos, like the short uploaded ones, which I created the timestamps for. And then uh, the other five are Carolyn Pajamas, um, Audrey Jean Jacket, Carolyn Pajama Bottoms, um, Ginger Jeans, Burnside Bibs? No, Burnside Bibs. I don't know what the other one is. Okay, so this is the patch pocket. Oh my gosh. Her size is like way over here. Like I can go all the way up to there. And I was gonna, I think I was gonna request the Tamarack jacket, but I think one of you did already did those. I think you might have. <laughs> because she just released the pattern I think she has like a, a sew along and all that. She doesn't need my video, but I would just like, you know, just in case people are searching for it. Timestamps would be nice and you guys already were on it. You guys are awesome. People really appreciate timestamps. All right, so these are the uh, front pockets. And so I'm gonna do one thing different. Well, maybe more than one. Hey, Sarah, <laughs> nice. These are the back pockets. Same thing, there's no grain line. This might be kind of a big pocket for her butt. Not sure. For the back pocket, you do need a little piece of binding. Um, I was just gonna hem it, but I think I am gonna do the binding. I think the binding, it can, um, I think you're supposed to cut it shorter. And then that way it will draw it in and keep it from stretching out or looking wavy, you know? <laughs> right, Nancy? Hey, Michelle. Yes, do it with the hood. I know, I would love to do another one. I was secretly hoping she was gonna ask me to sew it. <laughs> Alas. I would love to sew it again because um, that is one of my all-time favorite makes. All right, so we're gonna do two of this waistband. And like I said, I am a little still like, okay, I'm gonna do high. Yeah, so this line is the same for every size. And then you cut on this side, the one for your rise. So I can even go further over. This is my last pattern piece. So let's not go, so when you have a piece, don't cut the piece towards the fold because then you have a hole in the middle of your fabric. Cut it towards the selvage. I almost just did my, did that, you know, so. Yeah, I made myself a pair of the Ash jeans recently and I, I've made those before. You know, we all did those a couple years ago or last year, a couple years ago, a couple years ago, wow. Um, and I just made myself another pair of them and they, they were just, they're, they're perfect. The sewing the fly on those is a little confusing because I'm used to doing it a certain way. <clears throat> so 
So I think that's, but I think I'm going to record a how to sew jeans video that's fully edited and uploaded. And I think I'm going to use the Ash jeans. It won't matter what pair I'm using, you know. I posted my Tamarack jacket today if you want, guys want to see it on Instagram. I'm going to do the center right there. That's going to be really helpful. Look at how stretchy this is. Real. Again, I don't need these pattern pieces. We'll keep this back pocket for this little binding thing. I'll cut that on the fly. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna cut is this lining piece for the pockets. And I've decided to do this a little differently. So, the way you cut this front pocket lining, so the pockets sit on top of the pants, so they're not behind the pants. So <clears throat> you top stitch them on. So it's a great opportunity for do some, some nice top stitching and stuff. And then they have this piece of, of this facing here, but it doesn't face the whole pocket. It only faces this top part and then you stitch it down. So you're gonna have a stitch line in the middle of your pocket. I'm not a huge fan of that. So I think um, the two options I think you can do is you could bind this edge to the, to the inside, but I think I'm gonna face it with a line. I'm actually gonna stick with the lining, but I'm gonna go all the way down to the edge minus the seam allowance. So that's my plan. I'm gonna use this old shirt. I just thought it might be a nicer feeling pocket with the lining in there. So I'm going to cut two. I'm looking for my grain line. It's more like this on the fabric. I can see it. And I'm going to cut it so that the curved edge here is going to wrap around the lining. So I'm going to trim off three eighths of an inch around this edge. All the way around. Okay. And so then when I use my, when I sew my pocket on, it'll be a little bit shorter and then I can just turn the pocket around like that and uh, top stitch it on. Now I'll have to do some treatment to this curve to get it to lay flat without tucks. The way I think they do it is with that wonder tape stuff, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that came into play because it says to not turn under the edge because you'll have the tucks, but you have to finish that raw edge somehow. So I just need to pay attention to the instructions and we'll check it out. We'll figure it out together. Okay, Asian, thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, nice. Ah, oh, day off to sew, it's the best, isn't it? <laughs> you're so happy to be warm, Feverly. <laughs> yeah, because you're in, um, you're like north of Washington State, right, in Canada? Like you're somewhere kind of cool. cool. Um, okay, so what's other, what else do I want to tell you guys? I'm going to sew part one tomorrow, and then we'll sew part two on Saturday. I have a weird streaming schedule this month because of my um, daughter coming to visit next week. And the following week in the United States is Thanksgiving. And so um, we usually don't do some, much, but we do get together for dinner. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not sure if we're doing it or not since my daughter's coming next week. So you will probably see me next Saturday, like this week, you'll see me Thursday and Saturday. And the next week you'll see me on Saturday. And then the following week, You'll probably see me on Saturday as well. So kind of weird. I usually don't take really much time off. So um, 
Uh, I don't know when I'm streaming those two days, but it could be, it's an anything goes month. Hi, Patty, how's it going? Yeah, thanks, Divina. <laughs> Sleep well. Thanks for stopping by. Pretty gloomy right now, Beverly. Oh, man. How long are you going to be down there, Beverly? I know you go every year, right? Me either, Nancy. <laughs> All right, so let's get our pieces out. I think I'm going to pre-shrink this binding. No, I'm going to pre-shrink this binding for that back pocket. Let's lay out our pieces. Let's check it out. Check it out. I'm doing everything in this pattern. The, the cargo pockets, back pockets, front pockets. Um, my daughter, it, where, she, where she works, she has to kneel on the ground a lot. And so she's like, gosh, I think I'm gonna get jaggings. Ray, are you lurking, Ray? Hi, friend, how you doing? <laughs> you do you miss the Padini here? <laughs> you didn't miss much. <laughs> All right, so here's our front. The gear of the Panini where it all looks like we ate tons of paninis. Because now we need to resew all of our clothes. Or is that just me? Because they don't fit. I love blaming the my uh, weight gain on the panini. The great panini. That's what we call it in our chat. So I don't get demonetized. <laughs> So there's this little pocket. I mean, that fits in there. It just looks a little big. Where's the back yoke? Here we go. Oh, we're working in the garage. <laughs> Can you be a secret viewer? Did it, Margaret? <laughs> I like to blame it on that, but I have to be honest. Um, a few things happened last year in conjunction with the panini. <laughs> My daughter worked at a candy store and I love, I have a big sweet tooth, right? Um, and I turned 50. So I think that was part of it too. I've been researching a little bit about that. So you with me on the way you came there. Yeah. So at first I was pretty disappointed because I was approaching the fall and winter this year with like, dang, all of my pants, they, I can get them on, but, ugh, right. And so, um, I was kind of like bummed, you know, I'm like, dang, I have all these handmade things. But then I was like, you know what? This is great. Now I have an actual reason to sew clothes for myself because I have plenty of clothes. I don't really need much. I always say that. I know. All right, here we go. So this is, it's kind of dark, huh? <laughs> I don't know why that at thing doesn't work all the time. That's a little better, huh? And then I cut a little piece of this. I kind of wanted to look at that pattern piece though. Where'd it go? Oh, it's right here in my hand. So we have the, um, the fly is gonna go on this side right here. Back pocket, five and an eighth. So it is a little smaller. So I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of these. If you're binding, <clears throat> this is my standard PSA. If you're using binding, on a garment that has already been pre-washed, the fabric's all been pre-washed, please trust me when I tell you, you wanna pre-wash the binding. I have so many garments where you would be like, oh yeah, that's a good cautionary tale. So <clears throat> the remember, bias binding has been cut on the diagonal grain line, right? So if this were um, cut with these pants, this is how this fabric looked on the bolt. Like 
you cut it like this, whereas these were cut parallel to the length grain. This is the length grain on the bias tape, right? So if this was all uh, pre-washed, it's all got its you know, shrinking out of it, right? This hasn't been pre-washed. And remember, it's gonna shrink like this and like this, not like this or like this. This is, you know, this is the length grain, right? And the cross grain. One of those is the cross grain, one is the length grain. I don't actually know. <clears throat> I can't tell because this isn't a stripe or something. So if you were to, you're like, it's no big deal. I'm just gonna face the hem of something. Trust me, because what happens is when this shrinks, what happens is your outer garment gets shriveled up and it looks bad. Like everything will look nice and smooth and your hem is like, eek. It has all these like lines in it and texture. And then like I have this navy blue dress where I did that. And so after washing it many times, those little lines, not only are they, those wrinkles are there and I cannot get rid of them because I can't make the binding bigger. The, um, the wrinkles are now fading and like, you know, like anything would that's dark colored. So even if you just, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this in the sink, get it wet and then iron it dry. That's what I'm going to do. Just at least do that. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut a little piece and Do it in my little hand washing way. I have done that so many times uh, on so many, so many of my garments. It's a, such a tell that they're handmade because of that. It really makes it look um, amateurish. <laughs> there I said it. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so we're gonna sew tomorrow. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right, Ray? I know, I know. I know she's got this fancy um, stretch um, calculator, discombobulator thingy now. And I'm just like, oh, I have to use a 10 inch piece. You don't have to use a 10 inch piece, which is nice, Nancy. And you can bring that with you to a store. That's great. Like you could, if you're shopping for fabric and you need to know the stretch on it, you can't always, rely on what the bolt says everybody so it's good you can test it out i just kind of do an eyeball thing where i'm like all right i'm gonna hold this even if you do five inches five inches is easier to calculate than four i don't know why everyone always says four inches and the bigger the piece the more accurate it's gonna be okay <laughs> yeah exactly don't have to do the maths you can just read the maths <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna to get going because I think I'm kind of hot to trot on um, recording a video today, even though I've got my like, didn't take a shower here today. No one knows that, right? <laughs> yeah, that's great, Nancy. Yeah, whenever you go to a store again. Hi, Diane. Oh, I'm, ha I'm just about to finish up, Diane. Oh, I didn't even put the um, thingy on. Oh, well. <laughs> Um, I do, if you are looking at a five out of four pattern and you want to use my affiliate link, it's in the description. No worries. If you forget, trust me, it's truly not a big deal. Um, I add those things cause you guys asked me to. So, all right, Terry, have a good meal. Bye Walter. Hi Elena. Oh, no worries. No worries. I'll be sewing tomorrow and it's a part one, part two. So we'll take it nice and slow and enjoy it. I like it when we do it that way. It's nice, you know. All right, thanks for coming, you guys. Happy hump day, woo woo. That's what we always, my friends and I always say. <laughs> uh, have you guys seen that cam that commercial? You know, the camel walking through the office going, woo woo. Now you have homework. No, no, don't worry about it. I just cut pants out. <laughs> Uh, but I'm looking forward to sewing them. I think there's some interesting things here that are going to be um, challenging, you know. I have this, I'm afraid I'm going to include this X. So, <laughs> cool. All right, see you guys tomorrow.